He wants to work. That's his goal. And they've taken that away from him. Apparently, my hair may not be appropriate for work. The 20-year-old was told at his training session that he had to cut his dreadlocks off or go. Racial discrimination has to be based on characteristics that can't be changed. In 2016, a group of researchers and advocates at Perception Institute partnered with Shea Moisture to create the first study which examines attitudes related to black women's hair. This study is called Hair IAT and allows anyone to take an online survey which asks questions determining their opinions about black hair. This study comes right after a huge superior court decision that allows employers to reject job candidates due to their hairstyle. The Hair IAT study so far has found that the general public holds a harsh bias toward bushy, thick, and kinky, curly black hairstyle. Have you ever had a, a client come in and say that they actually need to change their look because of what was going on at work? It happens every other week, actually. Like every people, other week? Man, people come in the shop and be like, yo, I gotta cut my hair off, and they're scared of that they can't get the job because as soon as they get in, the interviewer is gonna, you know, discriminate on them and say, like, no, nah, he's a hoodlum, they're a criminal, they're not good people, they're rebellious. How does, how does that make you feel? I mean, I know it's not your hair, but like... And it is, it's not my hair, but sometimes I feel like it is. I'm, I'm the one who, who's been styling you up this whole time. I've been over here coaching, I've been coaching you how to grow it. I've been telling you what to put in it. I've been telling you how to take care of it. And then when you come in and you're like, yo, I, somebody's making me cut it off, and it's not you, it's not your decision. I don't like that. I feel like, yeah, we're the only ones that's targeted for the way that our body grows naturally. Like, what kind of, kind of world are we living in? Dreadlocks and beards are still considered unprofessional in many career fields. In 2012, Chastity Jones sued Catastrophe Management Solutions after they denied her employment for refusing to lose her dreads. The judge ruled that banning dreadlocks in the workplace is not discrimination. I have a wide range of right. clients. I, I mean, I have strippers up to judges that come right. in and get their hair done. My professional women, uh, most of them like their hair in a nice, neat style. And if they come in for extensions, they want to make sure that their extensions look exactly the same so it doesn't look like they have extensions in because it's, you know, frowned upon, I guess, in a professional setting. You know, I had to, I had to find what worked best for me. And so just with my hair now, I wear it like this because it kind of gives me individual achievement. So I feel hair is, man, hair is color it, do what you want with it. Hmm. At the end of the day, man, just be yourself with it. You know what I mean? It's an expression of, of, of your character, of who you are, who we are as people. We've heard from members of the Bay Area community who widely consider their hair to be a topic worthy of discussion, both at work and at home. There seems to be a consensus that hard work and professionalism should trump anyone's hairstyle choice. In a world where social justice and equal rights concerns are on the rise, and furthermore in a country where individual identity is demanded, shouldn't we be allowed to express our unique and diverse identity in the workplace?